Hello everyone, today I have a drawing tutorial for you. Today I'm going to draw some turnips using a brush pen and watercolor. If you want to follow along, you can go online and search for photos of turnips. Any photo will do, but look for photos that really show off the colors of the turnips, like those with a lot of greens and purples. Instead of drawing with a fountain pen that I normally do, today we will be drawing with this Pentel pocket brush pen. Now before you start drawing, be sure to test out the ink first to see if it's waterproof or water soluble. Since we are working with watercolor, we need the ink to be waterproof. I'm going to go a bit slow to test the brush pen first. So if you want really solid lines, you can draw a bit slower. If you want the very rough textured lines, you can draw faster. This is cold pressed paper, so it has quite a lot of texture. If you're drawing fast, the lines are going to be quite rough. Let's draw this big leaf at the top. Just play around with the brush pen, play around with the pressure, sometimes draw with thicker lines, sometimes draw with thinner lines. Just have fun and experiment with your brush pen or your brush. For the veins in this leaf, I'm going to draw with a very thin line. So for the leaf, for the edge of the leaf, I can draw with thicker lines because they are the boundaries. But for the lines that are within, I should draw them with thinner lines. To get these long lines smooth, draw with your whole arm, not with your wrist. And draw them a bit faster if you want smoother lines. As you are drawing, really pay attention to the contours of the leaf. Really spend the time to observe the contours and see how they turn. Spend more time observing the leaf than what you're drawing on the paper. That would make your drawing more accurate. So I want to have this little piece of leaf overlapping this big leaf behind. Try to have overlaps because they will make your drawing more dimensional, give it more depth. So now I'm just adding some veins to the leaf to make some of these shapes more, to make them easier to read as a piece of leaf. So this is what I have so far. Now I'm going to draw the bottom of the stem. Notice the texture of the lines, they are quite rough. Now for this particular section, pay attention to how the stems overlap. So we have this line that goes behind this line. And this will come down here. There is another stem that's behind. So this line will go behind this line. And this goes up. So you see all these T sections where the lines go behind, they give the impression that there is foreground and background, so it creates a sense of depth. So here as well, I want the lines to go behind. And now let's draw the turnip. I'm going to imagine what it's like before I draw it first. So I'm going to draw it in one smooth movement. Notice how rough that line is, I like it. So if I'm going to use a fountain pen, I will not be getting lines like this. Okay, so this is one. We have another one here. I'm going to let it go behind this one so that we can create that sense of depth. So this one is a bit more oval. And for the line at the bottom, I want it to be thinner. So as I draw, I'm going to reduce my pressure. I'm going to make it thin just to give it some variation. Let me add some details here. And let's draw the roots. So once again, pay very attention to how the lines, how they actually turn in the photo. The more observant you are, the more accurate you will be. 
drawing is sometimes more about patience than how good you can draw. So this is the completed drawing. And now I'm going to paint this using these three colors that I have here, Hansa Yellow Medium, French Ultramarine, and Permanent Ali Zari Crimson. So French Ultramarine is a warm blue, relatively speaking, and this Permanent Ali Zari Crimson, this is a cool red, relatively speaking. So these two will combine together to produce a vibrant purple, which is what I'm going to be using to paint the turnips here. Other alternatives you can use in place of permanent Alizari Crimson may be Queen of Crydon Rose, Queen of Crydon Lilac, even Pyro Crimson, Carmine. Look for any pigment that is PV19. Those are good for mixing with French Ultramarine to produce vibrant purples. So just to be sure, I've already created some color mixes using the three colors. So this is Sansa Yellow Medium mixed with Ultramarine to produce this very nice green. This is permanent Alizari Crimson with French Ultramarine. And this is Pyro Crimson with Ultramarine. I'm going to wet my paint first. These are Daniel Smith watercolor sticks, but I've already cut them up to fit into these pens here. Now, the first thing I want to do is to wet the paper first because I want to paint a light wash of green behind the leaves. Now the ink from the pocket brush pen should be waterproof but I can see that it's not totally dry yet so some of the ink is actually uh, coming off the surface but it's not too bad, it's not too dirty. So I'm going to let the colors mix on the paper. So I'm going to paint a very light wash, very light wash of green that is mixed with ultramarine and Hansa yellow medium. I'm going to pick up some of the excess paint at certain areas. So for certain areas along this side, for example, I want the edge to be sharp, but for other places I can have the colors come out of the boundaries. I used too much water here, so let me just try and pick this up. Try not to move the paint around and just let the water soak into the tissue. Let the first wash dry properly first. This is important because later when we paint the second wash, we don't want the colors to blend into the first wash. You can speed up the drying process by using a hair dryer or you can put this under the sun for a few minutes and it will dry pretty quickly. So now that this has dried, I'm going to be mixing greens, more vibrant greens with Hansa Yellow Medium and French Ultramarine and I'll be using that to color the leaves that are darker. Notice I'm using this small plastic palette here. I'm creating a large amount of mixture so that I can paint with it later on without running out of paint. It's good to create more mixture than um, less because later on if you run out of paint and you want to mix the same color it's going to be very challenging. So I'm going to take some of this Hansa Yellow and put here. And for this, I will be using, I'll be adding French Ultramarine. I want this green to be darker, so I will use more Ultramarine. All right, let's paint the leaves that are darker. So as you are painting, if you Thing you need the mix to be more blue, you can just add more ultramarine. Or if you think the color should be more yellow, you can quickly dab in some Hansa yellow. Now leave the stems, um, don't color over the stems because they are supposed to be bright. So this part seems to be in, seems to be a bit darker. Be careful not to color over the stems. So for certain areas, maybe here I may want more yellow, so I add a bit more yellow. I just quickly dab in some of the Hansa yellow for those, for this area. 
and for this area for this area here maybe a bit more ultramarine I'm using this squirrel brush here this is good for painting over large areas but for tiny areas like this it's a bit more challenging I could switch to another brush but um, I think I shall just stick with this and paint a bit more slowly so just um, to create some variation you can just charge in extra colors here and there if the mix is too blue just add more yellow if you feel like it's too yellow you can add more blue some of the edges here are a bit too hard so now I'm using this brush with clean water to sort of fade off some of the hard edges you may need to do this a few times in order to soften the edges in this area here there used to be a hard edge but now it's much softer and here as well and here notice this was a, a hard edge but now it's much softer while you're painting take a look at your photo see where it's darker and where it's lighter so if it's darker just paint over the area with a darker wash now I'm going to paint the tulips so I'm going to squeeze a little bit of permanent alizari crimson out first okay I think that should be enough right now before I do that I'm going to mix a very light wash of green just to paint the stamp that's way too uh, way too dark so I just want it to be a bit more green because now it looks to be it looks like it's too white I think this is nice enough now as the stem move towards the tunic the turnip itself I will be painting with permanent Alizari crimson this is too red so let me just spread this paint around I'm going to wet my brush and spread this paint around so while this is still wet I'm going to add in some ultramarine so we have ultramarine here and this color I like it to blend into the next turnip here and some of the purple can actually go into the stem just not too much I've just washed my brush I'm going to sort of fade the edges let me charge in some color here at the edges to make it a bit darker and here as well so I've just cleaned my brush and I'm going to pick up some of the paint that is here and dab it here I noticed that there seems to be some yellow in certain areas so I want to sort of spread some Hansai yellow just a tiny bit of Hansai yellow into some of the areas here while the wash is still wet the colors they can sort of spread out and for the roots here it's going to be a mix of Hansai yellow medium ultramarine and permanent Arizari crimson you see this edge here this is a bit too hard for my liking so I've just cleaned my brush with clean water I'm going to try and soften this edge first up slightly and see if it's going to work let me just clean this place up just to make it a bit brighter and softer so this is almost done now the turnips they look a bit too purple so I may want to lighten up certain areas here this is my tissue with some water on it so I want to pick up some excess paint and see if I can lift up some of the colors because I want this to be a bit brighter 
of course if you have done it right the first time around you don't need to correct the mistake the mistake I think this is this is fine all right the next the last thing I want to do is to uh, make some of the leaves here even darker so when I look at the photo that I have there is light background there is the mid tone and there is also the shadow which are the really dark areas so right now when i look at this this is just light and medium tone so i want i definitely want it to have some darker areas to basically create more contrast so for the darker areas they will be the leaves right at the back the leaves that did not get any light and for that I'll be using a lot of ultramarine so once you start adding the shadows the really dark tones the sketch the drawing will start to come alive because now there is light and shadow now even for the darker areas I also want to fade off some of the hard edge as well so I've just cleaned my brush so I'm going to fade off some of the harder edges for this part here, I think I may want to add a little bit more green and while this is still wet, very quickly wash my brush and let quickly wash my brush and blend the colors. All right, so that now it looks this green looks different from the first wash that I painted earlier so this is the completed drawing with brush pen and watercolor let's take a closer look so these lighter tones here they are from the first wash and while the wash was still wet for certain areas I dab in some extra ultramarine so you can see the color transition from Hansa yellow to ultramarine here and for certain areas it's just lighter yellow into more intense yellow so it's good to have this transition because it makes your wash look more interesting if there is no transition if it's just a flat wash like this it's going to well it's not as interesting compared to something like this and then later on when the first wash was dried i painted the second wash which is much darker so that's the actual color of the leaves they are much darker we have here here and here and then the shadow areas here so for some of the edges i soften them for some of the edges here like this part here it's sharp it's a very hard edge so again sometimes you have soft edges sometimes you have hard edges is to make your sketch look more interesting so notice here this wash this color it sort of fits into the white of the paper there is no hard edge here but here we have the hard edge here so overall when you look at this uh, overall sketch like this it makes it look more interesting rather than have this hard edge that goes all around Hansa yellow is sort of like semi-transparent so the mixture is not totally transparent and if you use a lot of paint the paint can cover over your ink lines but here I use quite a lot of water so it's still pretty transparent so as we move down here to the stamp I have the purple blending into the green again this is more interesting than just having green like this because if you do look at turnips in real life they do blend like this from the green into the purple and into the purple turnips themselves so we have the texture from the ultramarine and also from the brush pen and we can see the paper texture as well so all these textures make this sketch look a bit more interesting if the lines are very sharp like this area here if it's very sharp like this all the way the style is going to look very illustrative very clean but here it looks a bit more loose because of the texture and notice uh, when I paint I have the watercolor coming out of the lines they are not painted within like a coloring book this also makes the sketch look more loose 
If you want to color using the coloring book style, like painting within the lines, you can certainly do so. The look and feel will be very different from what I have here. So this piece was really fun to draw and paint with the brush pen and watercolor. This subject matter is not as complicated compared to the buildings, the street scenes that I usually draw. So I hope you guys can um, go ahead and practice, draw, have fun. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.